Greetings and salutations. My name is Fabian Thomas, and I'm excited about this process and about speaking to you in this format and in this medium. You know, so I was thinking about memory and trying to think of songs or popular culture references to memory. And as I plumbed through my memory, so three, three songs came to mind. So the first one is a traditional Jamaican folk song. Every time I remember Liza, water come on me eye. Every time I remember Liza, water come on me eye. Come back Liza, come back y'all. Water come on me eye. Come back Liza, come back y'all. Dry the tear from me eye. Then there's the lovely try to remember from the Fantastics. Try to remember the kind of September when we were young and oh so mellow. Try to remember the kind of September when grass was green and gray was yellow. Try to remember the kind of September when you were a young and callow fellow. Try to remember, and if you remember, then follow. And then there's the mighty institution that is Earth, Wind, and Fire that gave us oh, 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 yo. Say, do you remember? Oh, yo. Dancing in September. Oh, yo. Never was a cloudy day. Fabian, why, why are you thinking about memory? Well, this occasion is to talk about my book, my third book that I've written, and the title is Chapter and Verse, a collection of memories and moments. And it really looks at memories and moments from my life. And it was very interesting, this journey, because sometimes I could not remember a thing. Couldn't remember. Had to do research, had to call people. In fact, there's still some people I need to call to clarify some things. <laughs> need to go online and look at old emails to clarify dates. So in some of the stories, in some of the chapters, I find myself saying, well, I don't really remember when this happened, or I have to find out and clarify. Memory is this beautiful, fragile thing that we, we hold on to, that we reach out for, and sometimes it fails us. But this book excited me, this writing this book excited me because it really looks at memories and moments from my life that imprinted me, that impacted me, that moved me, that have contributed to the man I am choosing to be today, the way I am showing up in the world as I take this journey. And it's an exciting and frightening and revealing and beautiful thing. And I love the Jamaican, you know, saying chapter and verse, the old, the old kit and caboodle, everything. And so the title, as I said, is Chapter and Verse, a collection of memories and moments. Yes, the process, COVID-19. COVID-19 has taught us a bag of things, and I know taught me. So we have to dash with some old crosses, things we were hugging up old approaches and some things that were not working. You know, I say to people as a trainer facilitator, I've been saying to companies for years, for instance, if someone can deliver for you the results and the work you need from them yard, why are you making them come into the office? Why are they sitting at a desk? So I call it, you have to count the slaves. You know, Fabian has to be in his cubicle so you can tick him off and know he's here. But sometimes Fabian not doing work till midday. <laughs> I'm using your resources, I'm at the desk, but I'm not doing any work. Some people are not morning people. COVID has forced us to dash with the box. Think outside the box, what box, which box, box not nah keep. New ways of being, new ways of functioning. And so COVID, you know, all the time in the beginning of the, the, the lockdown, 
you have this extra time to think, to think about your life and ideas and creative ideas. And one of them was, oh, there's some books and scripts and things I want to write that are fresh and new or some old things I want to revisit. So there's a couple of ideas that I've had for years that I started to jot down and plan. The idea for this book came out of another idea for writing a book about my parents and my family's journey from England to Jamaica. And then it became, out of that and interviewing my parents came things I remembered um, about my childhood, but also about being in high school and university and living in New York. And I said, let me jump down and start to look at this memory project of things that I remember, things that were significant, that, that, that really, as I said, marked me and imprinted me. And... Because I get kind of lazy and I'm an older age. <laughs> so even with, I am quicker to send you a voice note than write. I find I like to just record voice notes. It's easier. So the book has 26 or 27 chapters. And what I did is I recorded them. I spoke into the phone. I recorded them on my phone. And then I sent them to some members of my group, Traps and Kofa, and one other person who's not in Traps and Kofa to transcribe them for me. And that's why the book got written so quickly. I think I, I finished writing the book in about two weeks, three weeks. So I just spoke into the phone. And you know, as jumbled and as muddled as the thoughts were sometimes, and then sent them to my transcribers, my transcribing team, to type them up and send them back to me. And what was interesting and also powerful is the way some people, if they were a writer themselves or had some kind of felt some kind of vibe from the story, you know, they helped tweak the order and, and little things like that or made suggestions. And so I found I had written like 20 chapters had them written and then I sent them to an editor, got some, some some tweaking and grammatical stuff done and some formatting and style. And so now I'm at 27 chapters in the book and I'm very excited. And so when Catapult came along, the possibility of doing this, you know, in this COVID-19 time. So I used a COVID-19 method and approach of planning because I had extra time and time on my hands and things to do um, and less things to do. And then along comes Catapult and the, that possible support. And I said, here's what I want to do. I want to try and do this project. So this is like a book trailer. And I plan to use this to shop around to get possible publishers um, to publish the book. Um, because it's also going to have pictures in it. Because it's memory and things from my life. And so it looks at things from living in New York, living across from a cemetery, having a colleague, having a vision about me and somebody wishing me ill and then I come into pass. You know, it looks at me having locks and the lady who I call my locks whisperer, Yvonne Clark. There's a chapter to her. There's a chapter to Lorna Goodison. There's a chapter to Leonie Forbes. There's a chapter honoring Charles Hyatt and my time with him when I did the answer. There's a chapter that's about my work in HIV. There's a chapter about... Um, you know, being free, being a poet. There's a chapter about my best friend. There's a chapter about my soul son. So there are all these, these interesting stories to me and I'm hoping that people will find them interesting. And I self-published my first book. I have a manuscript of spoken word shopping around to publishers now. And I'd love to get a publisher to, to publish this and I plan to use this project as like a book trailer to say, here's what the book's about, here's some pieces. So this is my introduction and the rest of this you'll see different snippets of chapters from the book and me presenting them in some different ways and I'm hoping you'll find it interesting. Thank you Catapult, thank you Kingston Creative, thank you Fresh Milk, thank you American Friends of Jamaica, big up on yourself. I'm really proud, very, very excited. So, you know, sit back, relax, enjoy or stand up wherever you are watching this. This is a little journey through chapter and verse. A collection of memories and moments by yours truly, Fabian Thomas. Thank you, peace, love, and blessings. Feel me, love, have lion heart. Feel me, love, have lion heart. Strong and everlasting. Only for you, female love will never die. Female love will never die. Shining like the stars, them only for you, female love. Have a lion heart, feel me love, 
of lion heart, strong and everlasting, only for you, strong and everlasting, only for you. So as we navigate the universe, you know, having this human experience as spiritual beings, if we're lucky, you come across other spiritual beings who impact you, who you connect with, and the connection is lifelong. I often use the expression that some people you meet them and my soul recognizes them. Well, Alan Wright was one such person and I met Alan when I was living in New York and Alan was also a writer. So we moved in the same kind of circles and just a phenomenal human being and we connected and became fast and furious friends and that connection remains the same even though we're on different parts of the world now but whenever we link up or see each other or talk, it's amazing. And so there's a chapter in the book that's dedicated to Alan and I'm going to share a short um, snippet from that chapter. There was this night, I think we had had dinner and we're walking home or to walk into the train station. I was telling Alan that there was this song, a Shaka Khan song that I couldn't remember, but I couldn't get it out of my head. I hummed part of it, but it just wasn't coming back to me. Shortly after I got home that night, or maybe it was the next day, Alan called me shouting, saying, this is it, this is it. So it turns out the song was actually, please pardon me. You know, please pardon me, cause I'm longing to see him. And I hope you don't mind my staring. I don't mind, cause your face looks so kind. Well, Alan held up the receiver to the speaker so I could hear it. And it was just priceless. I remember it as if it were yesterday. Another Alan memory. We had done a short, specially prepared performance somewhere. The cast was me, him, and a guy named Max. We were talking about it with somebody later, and I had said that there had been a smattering of people. In his inimitable way, Alan said, you're the only person I know who would innocently and casually say there was a smattering of people. How can I not love you? His laughter rang out as he hugged me. Alan Wright. I can't fully express how much I love this man. Once he said to me, you are joy walking around on two feet. Me say me heart full. I've never forgotten that. It is a description, a declaration that I accept and celebrate. I am joy walking around on two feet. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Patricia. Patricia was our baby, our daughter, our child, or refers to the team, staff, and family at Jamaica Aid Support. It wasn't called Jamaica Aid Support for life then. Then, being 1994, we were the only NGO dedicated to HIV and AIDS prevention, awareness, support, and advocacy at the time, as well as the only AIDS hospice in Jamaica. Patricia had taken a journey from Montego Bay, where she was terribly abused, then abandoned by her family. The nurses in the children's home which she was in were afraid to touch her. The lady in charge lamented that even though she wanted to, she simply did not know how to support and encourage her staff to care for Patricia without discrimination and fear. Patricia, a fragile assortment of bones held in place by skin covered with blemishes and scars was languishing. My colleagues, Christine English and Ian McKnight, drove to Montego Bay for a meeting at the Jazz chapter there and visited the home. They returned the next day, collected Patricia, and drove all the way back to Kingston with her. In that four-hour journey, she did not speak a word. Not a single, solitary word. This child four years old, rendered speechless by the trauma of abuse and neglect, fighting a battle with AIDS. Love conquers all is not a cliche. Love heals and changes everything. 
By the time we got her, after a few months, we could not shut that same muted child up. Chattering, giggling, laughing with her belly, skipping around, being and bringing joy into our lives. I maintain that everything I know about parenting, I learned from Patricia and the turbulent, traumatized little boy who landed in our midst a little later, becoming our son and Patricia's brother. So, that brings us to the end of my catapult-funded pre-publication book trailer for my third book. Yes, and I say third book because I'm speaking, speaking it into being. And it's called what? Chapter and Verse, A Collection of Memories and Moments. And if you're watching this, it means you've watched and taken the journey to the end. So thank you very much. Thank you, Catapult. Thank you, Kingston Creative. Thank you, Fresh Milk. Thank you, American Friends of Jamaica, for helping me to make this possible. Now, please affirm and hold consciousness with me that this little book, or as my friend would say, this big book will get published. So look forward to getting it in your hands, ordering it online, getting it virtually. Um, and tell a friend, if you know anybody who's a publisher and publishers, if you're watching this, link me. Um, and you can follow me for updates on wherever you're watching this trailer. So peace and love. My name is Fabian M. Thomas. I'm excited. I'm giving thanks. And I'm affirming this book, seeing the light of day and taking the world by storm. Enough love and light.